Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Ask Sebi, and today we are going to talk about how I use my American Express Platinum card and what I view as its main benefits. In the past, we did talk about why I do not recommend using it for hotels and also why I personally don't use it for airfare, but I think that one's a more your mileage may vary situation. It might make sense for some people. So you have two big categories that might not make sense. What is the purpose of this card? What do you use it for? One quick thing too is that I don't really value the Uber credits, SAX credits, the travel credit as perks because to me they are more things that make the annual fee more reasonable. You might want to discount these credits yourself based off how you value them, but for me, I pretty much value them at that 100% rate because I use Uber. The travel credits are pretty easy to turn into something that's easy to use if you don't pick the wrong airline. So 550 minus 200 for Uber, 200 for the airline, and then 100 for the SAX makes it $50 effective fee. Even if you value that SAX credit at 50% of its rate, so if you are single or if you just have no one in your life who shops at expensive places, then that's 50, so effective annual fee is still $100 instead of that 550. For me, the perks of the Platinum card break up into three different sections. It's going to be lounges, special relationships, as well as purchases. Before I dive into that though, let me know down below what you use your Platinum card for and what you think its most valuable benefit is. Also, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. In terms of lounge access, we have the Centurion Lounge, Delta, special lounges that are related to them, as well as sports. I feel like we've talked about the Centurion Lounge quite a bit, but depending on the airport you're based out of, this might be a pretty useful benefit to grab a snack and also to grab a few drinks. I feel like at most airports, cocktails are about 10 to $15, so even if you have one, two, three drinks, that adds up quite a bit. For Delta, you also have access to the Delta Sky Club lounges as long as you are flying Delta and you have your Platinum card with you. This is pretty valuable if you are a Delta Elite, just because even if you have status, even if you have Platinum or Diamond status, you can't normally access the lounges unless you're flying internationally. This means that without the Amex Platinum card, you either have to get the Delta Reserve card or you have to buy club access per time or you have to buy the club membership. For special lounges, they do have relationships outside of Priority Pass that makes sense depending on where you're based out of. And also one interesting story is that we have had times where the lounge is turning away Priority Pass people, but they also take the Platinum card as a separate entry method. So they're accepting the Platinum card, but not Priority Pass. I believe this was in a lounge in Kuala Lumpur, but yeah, something that might make sense and might be useful in fringe situations. The final two lounges are going to be the Staples Center as well as the Barclays Center. Barclays Center, any activity, even if it's a music event, you have access to that lounge. For Staples Center, it's only going to be sports events, so the big three, Clippers, Lakers, as well as the Kings, so hockey. The big benefit is that you can buy nosebleed seats for $20 for a Clippers game and then go down to that main area for that suite level. You do have to have an active platinum card and they swipe it, but pretty straightforward and I think it's a pretty useful benefit. I know some people get convinced to get this card after hearing about this benefits. If you do want to learn more about it and you want to support our channel, pretty easy way to do that would be to use the links on our sites or the links down below in the description box. Moving on to special relationships, we have hotels as well as restaurants. For hotels, this would be MX FHR, which is Fine Hotel and Resorts Program, meaning that when you do stay and book through FHR, you are going to get upgrades, you're going to get late checkout, you're going to get free benefits, so breakfast typically, and also get a $100 credit towards spa or activities. If you're booking somewhere that is more boutique or somewhere where you don't have status, this ends up being pretty helpful. Chase also does have a similar one called the Luxury Hotel and Resorts Collection, so LHRC, and again, it just depends on whether you stay at these places or whether you would pay for it. Vegas is typically a pretty good place to use this because I feel like the rates for these properties end up being a lot more reasonable. The second one is going to be restaurants, and this one depends on if they have a relationship with them. The big benefit is that you can get around the list, so if it is sold out tonight, if there are no more tables, they might have five, six, ten tables allocated to these partners like Amex. This means that you can get on the reservation list and have a table tonight when it's technically sold out. And my guess is that they typically leave these for walk-ups, so they're allocating you that space. The next one is going to be desserts, and we found that oftentimes when we make reservations through Amex, we end up getting a free dessert. I'm not sure if it's the restaurants doing it or if Amex is paying for dessert, but pretty nice perk anyways. The final group of benefits are going to be for purchases. Here we have return protection, purchase protection, as well as extended warranty. 
For return protection, pretty straightforward, but if you buy an item and you can't return it back to the store within a 90 or 120 day period, then you can return it to American Express and they're going to refund you the total amounts. Number two is going to be purchase protection and this is for 90 days or 120 days, depending on the state that you're in. So for New York, I know it's 90 days. The main benefit is that it covers your purchase up to $10,000 if you lose or it gets stolen or if you damage something that you bought within that period. Again, there's rules. I think if you buy a car, that's not going to be covered. But for a lot of big purchases, if you are someone who buys equipment, that ends up being pretty helpful. So for example, if I buy a $2,000 lens, I typically buy it before a trip in the fringe situation that someone tries to rob me or something happens. If I accidentally drop it, I'm not out $2,000. I can make that claim for either the total amount or the cost to repair it. You don't have to be traveling, but I feel like it's more likely for something weird to happen when you travel versus when you are living your normal life. I've been pretty lucky that I haven't had to use this benefit, but it's still something in the back of my head. If I'm buying a $2,000 lens for a trip, I would rather be protected rather than not protected. I also feel like if I'm covered, I'm less likely to be an idiot if someone's trying to rob me. I feel like if I know I'm losing it and I don't have any protection on it, then I'm probably going to do something stupid like try to fight back. While if I know I'm covered by Amex, I'm going to be like, hey, here's the camera. I need to file a police report to get this claimed, but otherwise I'm good. Drones are another pretty good use case, or again, any item that is otherwise pretty expensive. Laptops, phones, anything else like that. Be aware that you do get this benefit on some other cards that are tier 3 protection cards. So with the new Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant card, you also get this protection. And same thing with the Hilton Aspire card. Well, some of the other lower tier American Express cards, you do get similar benefits, but it doesn't cover loss. I don't have any evidence for this, but I also feel like if you have a Platinum card, it's just an easier process rather than having an everyday card or the blue cash every day. The final benefit is going to be extended warranty, and again, pretty much the same idea. There are other cards that offer extended warranty, but I feel like the fact that the insurance is offered directly by American Express and most of it is handled in-house means that the process is a lot easier. With American Express, as long as the facts make sense, I feel like they're more likely to side with you than against you. With other ones, if you don't have all of your T's crossed and all of your I's dotted, then they're going to find a reason to say no. I don't use my Platinum card for hotels or for airfare, but I am going to use it for a lens or for a camera body or for a drone or for any other expensive item that I'm worried about breaking, losing, or something happening to in the first 90 days. On that note, if you are someone looking to learn more about this card and you want to support the channel, pretty easy way to do that would be to use the links on our site or the links in the description box down below. Hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is how do you use your Platinum card? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. If you know anyone else who'd benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share this video with them because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.